Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we're joined by Andrew Shikia, who is the Executive Director and CMO at FIDO Alliance. The FIDO Alliance is an open industry association with a focused mission of authentication standards to help reduce the world's over-reliance on passwords. The FIDO Alliance promotes the development of, use of, and compliance with standards for authentication and device attestation. Andrew joins us today to tell us more about FIDO Alliance and what they're doing in the APEC market. Thank you for coming along, Andrew, and welcome to the jam. Thank you, Tom. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Uh, let's just jump straight into it. Could you explain to us what Fido Alliance is and how the association came about? Yeah, I mean, you kind of hit on it a little bit in your intro. Uh, so let me recap that and talk a little bit more about kind of our, our mission and our background. Uh, so Fido Alliance has been around for you know over 10 years now, um, and we are an open industry body focused on reducing reliance on passwords. Um, so that's what FIDO is best known for, right? Re replacing passwords with pass keys. What's interesting though, is that you know, one of the initial drivers for this actually was to address the data breach problem. Um, but the fact of the matter is the vast majority of data breaches and remote account takeovers are due to passwords. So if you solve the password problem, you start to tackle the data breach problem as well. Um, so we work as an open industry body. We have over 250 members. Each member is an organization. Um, they work inside of FIDO Alliance to create technical standards, business best practices, um, and also help shape all the other programs that we have as a body, including our certification program, um, our market adoption programs, and things like that. Well, now, what is FIDO Alliance's footprint like here in APEC, and what sort of resources do you have here? Yeah, so a lot of the earliest innovation around FIDO was actually driven you know, from Asia Pacific. Um, notably in Japan and Korea and China, I've uh, got some of our you know, founding members and, and earliest points of adoption. Uh, so in Japan, for example, Entity Docomo uh, was the first mobile network operator to support you know, FIDO authentication to allow mobile customers to sign in without a password. Um, Samsung has long been a stalwart you know, founder and, and supporter of FIDO, um, not just in its devices, but for things like Samsung Pay and Samsung Pass and, and other, other, uh, other technologies. Um, likewise, we've seen you know, dozens of banks uh, and, and service providers support FIDO throughout Asia Pacific. More recently, uh, we've seen a lot of activity and growth in the broader kind of ASEAN region and also uh, Taiwan, uh, where we see governments um, advancing their national identity schemes and leveraging FIDO authentication as a passwordless sign-in method you know, therein. Um, we see a lot of private industry also supporting FIDO. In fact, uh, just last month, we had our first ever FIDO APAC Summit in Vietnam, uh, which is a three-day event. We saw you know, dozens of case studies and speakers talking about how you know, they're you know, working with the FIDO standards to get rid of passwords for consumers and workforce applications alike. So all in, just to kind of go back to the, the original question, um, of our 250 or three, you know, 275 members, um, probably around a third of them um, are headquartered in Asia Pacific. And of course, a lot of our multinationals um, have strong representation in the region as well. Now, what is your association's main objective and how do you go about achieving that? Yeah, I mean, simply put, our main objective is to get rid of passwords or, or stop being dependent on passwords. Um, and we achieve that in multiple ways. And it's kind of shifted a little bit over the past couple of years in a very meaningful way. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we are a standards organization. So we build technical specifications. Um, and so we've been around for 11 years. We've released different specifications for um, allowing um, products to support passwordless authentication and for allowing service providers to implement it as such. And some of this initially was done for like a, a biometric sign-in, right? So you're, you're accustomed to using uh, Face ID or Touch ID or the Android equivalent. You know, we have specifications that enable that in devices that tie back to the user's authentication credentials. Um, we also have a specification that allows for a, um, a FIDO certified second factor. This is called U2F, where you might be entering a password and then for a second factor, instead of an OTP, you have what's called a U2F um, sign in with a security key or something else, uh, which is again, an unfishable form of two-factor authentication. Um, all of this is our specifications. The way FIDO works you know, fundamentally is instead of having a password on a server and the, the secret stored in your brain, um, we're replacing that old model with something called public key cryptography, 
where to in, when you enroll with an account, instead of having shared secrets, um, you have a unique key pair where what's called a public key sits on the server and then the private key stays safely on your device. When it comes time to sign in, you verify yourself locally to your device and then the key is activated to have a secure dialogue with the public key. What's fundamentally different about this approach versus passwords is that everything you're doing is done locally and securely on your device. And then the communication between the device and the server is fully encrypted between those keys. That mechanism eliminates the ability for a hacker to get in the middle of that dialogue, which they often do through, say, a phishing attempt, where they fish you into, spoof a user into going to a fake site and entering their passwords, and they take over this over the account. It stops hackers from buying your credentials off the dark web and trying to stuff them into a website or just simply guessing your password. Right, that's the way FIDO works. What we've done most recently is introduce the concept of pass keys, where this private key, this credential now, as opposed to having to be individually enrolled in each device that you use, it's auto, you know, you enroll once, that pass key is then readily available across all your devices. So if you enroll for like e-commerce provider.com, say on your MacBook, um, when you go to your iPhone or your iPad, it's automatically there. Then all you need to do, to use is uh, you know, iCloud Keychain. Likewise, the same experience can carry forward on Chrome and Android devices and on Windows devices as well. So with passkeys, you know, we've maintained the same level of security and phishing resistance, but added significantly to usability. And that comes down to the key point I was trying to make. It's a very long-winded answer, but you know, how do we go about achieving that? What we've found is that usability is key, right? And that's somewhat intuitive. If technology is too hard to use, it won't get leveraged, right? So in the workforce, your employees will work around it. Your consumers won't opt into it. So the user experience needs to be as you know seamless as possible. And we're laser focused on providing guidance and best practices to help companies implement pass keys with an optimal user experience. That's a very interesting concept. I actually quite like that. Uh, well, now, could you tell us a little bit about FIDO authentication uh, and what that offers to organizations across APAC? Yeah, I mean the, the value proposition is you know really global in nature, um, and it comes down to you know a, a couple of things. So let's talk about a you know there's two primary scenarios: one's in the workforce, and one is with consumers. Um, in the workforce, it's very much a, a bottom line value proposition, right? So right now your employees, um, if they're relying on passwords or or, or old forms of two FA, um, you know, there's a high risk they're going to need to reset passwords. There's hard costs associated with, associated with password resets, um, like the physical costs of actually resetting the passwords. You have an IT worker who's doing that. You have employee downtime uh, and all sorts of wasted resources associated with you know, helping people log into systems and services. Additionally, you know, we see more and more attacks and social engineering attacks, uh, technical attacks on workers to try to get them to turn over their credentials. And that's how hackers, you know, break into networks, break into systems, and do things like, you know, hold, you know, uh, execute ransomware attacks. And we saw this very recently um, in Las Vegas, Nevada, where the MGM Resorts and I think another one, I forget the other resort, other casino, they were both victims of ransomware attacks where a remote attacker didn't do anything super technical. They, you know, did some basic research, some social engineering research, and called in to the IT help desk and, and basically fooled the workers into handing over their second factor credentials, which then allowed those hackers to break into the network and have you know, access to sensitive data, uh, which they'd only relinquish after a you know, 30 something million dollar ransom was paid, right? So that's what happens when you're dependent on shared secrets for user authentication, whether that's a password or a common second factor of an OTP, like a one-time passcode, uh, which is also a human readable secret, which obviously, as we just saw, can be transferred to a bad actor and used to take over an account. So that's the workforce setting. So with FIDO authentication, with pass keys, it de-risks that whole thing. Because again, the user must you know, verify themselves to their device and that can't be spoofed out of the user, right? The only way to take over someone's account is to physically take their device, which eliminates the remote scalable attacks um, and, and greatly you know, narrows that threat vector. On the consumer side, if you're an e-commerce merchant or someone like that, um, 
there's bottom line savings as well in the sense that you know you have less data breaches, less you know support desk costs and things like that. But additionally, you know more and more companies are looking at the, the top line opportunity, right? So um, we do research every year, and the, the research we'll be releasing next month shows that within the past six months, over half the consumers we interviewed actually abandoned a purchase because they forgot their password. Right, so that's a remarkable number of people who are not making a purchase because they don't know how to log in and access their account. Right, your typical um, e-commerce company has maybe a, a, a seventy to eighty percent sign-in success rate. So once someone's enrolled with FIDO authentication, that sign-in success rate goes up, you know, close to hundred percent. The time to sign in for for two FA goes down by around eighty percent. So not only are you saving money in the sense that you're reducing help desk time and and and, and things like that. Um, but you're also, you know, creating greater revenue opportunity because more people can access the content and purchase, um, purchase services online. Well, I guess one last question to finish off for someone who wanted to engage with Fido Alliance, uh, what's the best way for them to find out more? Yeah, I mean, our website's a, our our best resource, so FidoAlliance.org. Um, that's appropriate for industry, um, you know, industry leaders. So if you are at a vendor, if you are with a service provider, um, you know, all sorts of resources there. So vendors might be keen to understand how they can use the specifications in their products. And then the service providers might be interested in learning, you know, about other companies that have deployed FIDO, you know, reading case studies and things like that, so they can understand how to deploy pass keys instead of passwords to their consumers and to their workforce. Oh, awesome. Well, it has been a pleasure having you on the jam, Andrew, and learning more about FIDO Alliance and what you guys are doing in the region. Uh, we look forward to hearing more from FIDO very soon. Super. Tom, thank you so much.